stage one is complete. Counting down to T0 at about T minus two, the Merlin 1D engines will light for liftoff. The vehicle continues to be healthy and Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues. Currently the weather is green and the range is ready to support a T0 at 4.55 p.m. Eastern time. We have a 90% probability of launch today based on weather. And in these last few minutes, Falcon 9 is performing the final health checks on its primary communications, avionics, and propulsion systems in preparation for flight. We'll have that VOX load callout complete here shortly. Stage two, lock load complete. With stage two, locks load complete. That gets us inside the two Tracking minute marker auto, to auto. countdown. Checkouts on the second stage thrust vector control have passed. We'll get to uh, engine gibbling and wiggle test on the first stage much closer before ignition. At the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying 260 statute Ground miles of the border of Mexico and Guatemala. Now, we are just about 20 seconds from T minus one minute where the Falcon 9 will be in startup and the onboard flight computers will take control of the countdown. Dragon will also transition to internal power at this time. Falcon 9 is in startup. We are now in startup. Dragon is in countdown. And Dragon is in countdown. Range remains go for launch, waiting for that final go from the SpaceX launch director. SpaceX launch director, go for launch. You heard that call out. The launch director has given that final go. All systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 in the CRS-30 mission. Do you want to say second? Seconds. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and lift off at a Dragon Center to 8, 1, 5, 40. On NASA's SpaceX 30th Commercial Resupply Services mission, Falcon 9 at 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Pitching down range, hearing good calls of performance. Nominal trajectory as Falcon 9, Dragon, arc out to the northeast. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And during ascent, we will tilt or gimbal our engines, guiding the rocket into what we call a gravity turn. Through this turn, the vehicle is flying both up and horizontally, nominal. horizontally away from the launch pad. Now, this rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to make it to orbit and avoid being pulled back down to Earth. So moments ago, we did throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure in just a couple seconds. Max Q. There was that call out for max Q. And coming up, we have a few events in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, second engine startup one, and the start of the boost back burn for the first stage. And back is chilling. There's the call out. The MVAC engine on the second stage is chilling in, getting ready for startup. Now, the first of these events is ma main engine cutoff, or MECO, where the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage will shut down in preparation for stage separation, which is where stage one and two will separate from each other with the first stage making its way back down to Earth and the second stage uh, performing second engine start one which is where we ignite that single Merlin vacuum engine on board the second stage. Now the boost back burn will then start on the first stage. This burn helps assist the vehicle flip back around and reorient, reorient itself back to land. Nico is starting in just a couple seconds.
Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Stand back position. Stage one boost back startup. There you heard and saw those events happening back to back. Awesome views of the first stage flipping back around as it performs its boost back burn. Again, we had main engine cutoff of the first stage, stage separation, second engine start on the second stage, and that first stage doing the awesome flip as it starts its boost back burn. Now this burn is a little under a minute, so we have about 20 seconds left in this burn. And about three minutes after that, we will have two additional burns on the first stage to prepare to land back at landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. We are at T plus three minutes and 30 seconds here in today's mission. CRS-30 is SpaceX's- Stage one boost back shutdown. There is that confirmation for the boost back shutdown of oh, the first stage. And a nominal trajectory. And a nominal trajectory. As again, CRS-30 is SpaceX's 27th launch this year. And we are coming up on the entry burn of the first stage as well as second engine cutoff. On those live views of the first stage, you can see the attitude control system creating those beautiful puffs of white gas. And that's nitrogen from the cold gas thrusters of the attitude control system. And around T plus six minutes and 30 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn. And for the entry burn, we relight three of the M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center engine nine, followed shortly by engines one and five, which slows the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which helps us to recover and reuse the first stage. <laughs> The second stage on the right, you can see beautiful views of the Earth in the background and that Merlin vacuum engine heating up as it performs its burn. Again, we are a little over a minute to the start of our first stage entry burn. You can see the first stage on those live views on your left with two of the four hypersonic grid fins deployed, helping steer that first stage down as it makes its way back home to Earth. Now you can see the telemetry on the bottom left and right hands of your screen. The right hand side is the second stage carrying our Dragon capsule and the left hand side is the first stage. You can see the second stage speeding up as it is performing its burn. And the first stage is coming back down towards the Earth's atmosphere with the altitude decreasing. Really cool views from the attitude control system of the first stage. Just about 20 seconds from the start of our first stage entry burn. We should be able to see really cool views of that burn from those views on the left of your screen. Stage one entry burn startup. There is the start of the stage one entry burn. And this is a three engine burn on the first stage of Falcon 9. Stage one entry burn shut down. There you stage saw. Stage one FTS has saved. Really cool views of the end of the first stage entry burn and Both the flight. Stage is nominal trajectory. And the call outs for nominal trajectory and the flight termination system being saved. Now the first stage that is supporting today's mission will be has just performed this entry burn for the sixth time. Falcon 9 is the world's first orbital class reusable rocket and this allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket which in turn drives stage down Stage 1 transonic 
drives down the cost of access to space. Now coming up, we have that landing burn starting in just a few moments. There's the start of Stage one landing burn. Start of that landing burn. Really cool view of Cape Canaveral Coast. Stage one landing lake deploy. Wow, wonderful views of that first stage landing. Stage landing Back at landing zone one, looking pristine there, and there you have it. That landing marks SpaceX's 286 recovery of an orbital class rocket, including the first stage landings for Falcon stage 9 two, FTS has saved. and Heavy. You heard that call out that stage two FTS is safe, getting ready for second engine cutoff here in just under 10 seconds. And back shut down. There is that second engine cutoff with the MVAC shutdown call out, waiting for confirmation of a good orbital insertion. Orbit insertion. There is that confirmation of good orbit. It looks like we are on track for Dragon separation in just a few minutes, just before the T plus 12 minute mark. It has been a great launch so far. As I mentioned earlier, today's launch was the first for our upgraded Dragon to be flying from Slip 40 after we stopped flying the older dra older version of Dragon back in 2020. I just wore our growing launch manifest. We've made new upgrades to Space Launch Complex 40, including a brand new tower and access arm, which enables more efficient late load operations as well as human spaceflight missions. And with these updates, we are on our way to having two launch pads capable of supporting flying humans to space. You can see really cool views of the MVAC engine and the Earth in the background from the second stage. And in addition to flying cargo to support crew on board the space station, SpaceX also enables researchers the opportunity to fly critical science to orbit on Dragon, which has carried over 1,000 research experiments to and from low Earth orbit and the International Space Station since 2012. Enabling research in space paves the way for us to explore beyond Earth and make life multiplanetary. And now we are waiting for Dragon to separate from Falcon 9's second stage. To recap so far, we had an on-time liftoff at 4.55 p.m. Eastern time Everything has proceeded nominally so far. Stage separation occurred at about two and a half minutes into flight, and that was followed by a successful landing of Falcon 9's first stage at landing zone one back in Cape Canaveral, Florida. That was the sixth landing for that particular Falcon 9 first stage. And for those of you following along, this Dragon capsule has also supported CRS-22, CRS-24, and CRS-27, which were three additional cargo resupply missions to the International Space Station. At about T plus eight and a half minutes, we had a successful second engine cutoff, followed by confirmation of a good orbital insertion. The vehicle is now coasting with Dragon attached, and we are just about 30 seconds away from spacecraft separation. We're seeing great views from the second stage with the Earth and the sun in the background as it prepares to separate Dragon so that Dragon can begin its journey to the International Space Station. Just a few seconds from payload deployment. You can see Dragon floating away there. It's very exciting to see Dragon is drifting away from Falcon 9 second stage there, confirming good spacecraft separation. Now SpaceX is honored to be a part of NASA's Commercial Resupply Services Initiative to deliver critical cargo to the space station. And we thank NASA for entrusting us with today's mission.
For those of you following along, you'll know that this mission marks our 27th of the year. Congratulations to the SpaceX team. We're just in March and we're already launched in partnership with NASA missions like Axiom 3, Cygnus, and PACE, Intuitive Machines, Crew A, and more. You can check spacex.com slash launches for up-to-date missions and schedules. But that will do it for me here in Hawthorne. But I'm handing it over to Gary to take us through nose co Dragon Nose Cone opening. Gary? Hey, thank you, Yome. We were following along from here in Mission Control Houston, a wonderful launch of Dragon from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Great to see Dragon in orbit and starting its journey on the way to the International Space Station. We're continuing our coverage here in Mission Control Houston, awaiting for the nose cone to deploy. The nose cone is at the very tip of the Dragon spacecraft. Once deployed, exposes the four forward bulkhead Dracos. These Draco thrusters will execute the series of maneuvers necessary to raise its orbit and meet up with the destination of Dragon's launch today, the International Space Station. Of course, after separation, it is carrying three tons of supplies, including science, as well as some food to the International Space Station. A common question we get is what sorts of treats and food are inside Dragon that the Expedition 70 crew aboard station is awaiting. We did receive word that there is a fresh food kit, including some fruits and vegetables like citrus, apples, and cherry tomatoes inside Dragon right now. There's also two crew requested coffee kits and 60, that's six zero, bulk overwrap bags. These are standard bobs containing some standard um, food menu items as well as some crew preference choices. You're getting a live look at the second stage, now transferring to the control rooms. On the left side, you see the SpaceX mission control teams over in Hawthorne, California, that oversaw today's launch and will continue to monitor Dragon on its journey to the International Space Station over the next day and a half. The teams you see there on the right are here with me in Mission Control Houston, the International Space Station flight control teams monitoring the orbiting complex and, of course, the operations jointly with Hawthorne, uh, the flight controllers there. Joint operations between the two teams you see here will come a little bit closer to when Dragon is in its final approach phase, uh, just about two hours or so prior to docking. Docking is scheduled for early Saturday morning. Teams here are waiting for the nose cone deploy um, of Dragon, and we're standing by and continuing our coverage. Now, a little bit about the uh, coming days and what Dragon and the journey that Dragon will undergo. So now that we are past the spacecraft separation, separation from the Falcon 9 and awaiting that nose cone deploy, we're in the activation and rendezvous phase of the mission. During this phase, phase Dragon is configured for on-orbit operations. The phase begins after separation that we just saw from the Falcon 9 and ends with the completion of the final co-elliptic burn. The initial orbit today is about 190 kilometers by 210 kilometers, those values representing the perigee and apogee of the orbit, or the lowest and highest points over the Earth. Not a perfect circle, more like a very slight ellipse. So over the next day and a half, Dragon will execute a series of burns, which will gradually raise its orbit to align more closely with the station. There are five major burns. Uh, where the Draco thrusters on Dragon will fire and bring the spacecraft close to the station before we begin the final approach maneuvers. Let's go ahead and review that now. First is the first major burn, the phase burn. This is performed at the first apogee or the highest point of the initial orbit and raises Dragon's perigee or the lowest point to a higher altitude. The next burn which, based on the orbital data that show, that we're seeing, is the boost burn, which raises Dragon's orbit until it reaches an altitude just about 10 kilometers lower than the space station. This is followed soon after by the close co-elliptic burn to place Dragon on an orbit that's roughly co-elliptic with the space station. It means the crew, or the Dragon itself, will be about 10 kilometers lower than the station during the entire orbit around the Earth. The fourth maneuver is the transfer burn, where we're raising Dragon's apogee, or the highest point of its orbit, to just two and a half kilometers below the station. 
then we round everything out with what's called a final co-elliptic burn to once again maintain that orbit just beneath the station, but this time on a plane that is two and a half kilometers below. below. We did get word that the nose cone is starting to deploy. This sequence takes just a couple of minutes until it's fully opened, and again, exposing the forward bulkhead dracos that will execute the maneuvers you see here on your screen. The final coalyptic burn you see there on the screen will lead us to the approach initiation. This is the final stages of Dragon's rendezvous with the space station and beginning integrated operations with the team here in Mission Control Houston and the teams over in Hawthorne, California. During the approach, the SpaceX flight controllers will work in tandem with the teams here to execute, uh, to test out a number of systems and test communications between the spacecraft and the station with a system called C2V2, which stands for Common Communication for Visiting Vehicles, sets up a data stream between the Dragon and the station. We'll see that maneuver on Saturday, early morning, bringing uh, the approach initiation burn and bringing Dragon just below the International Space Station. Teams you see here on your screen are monitoring the Dragon after its separation. To begin the activation and rendezvous phase, we are opening the nose cone. We're about halfway through and tracking good progress. Once it is fully opened, they'll perform a series of checks to work on those forward bulkhead Draco engines. These are on the very tip of the Dragon spacecraft and will execute those burr maneuvers that we just went over. Twenty minutes after the launch of NASA's SpaceX 30th Commercial Resupply Services mission. Still continuing to follow along, the teams here are monitoring the opening of the nose cone at the end of the Dragon spacecraft. Again, exposing those forward bulkhead Dracos. We'll continue to cover this mission until that is fully open. So again, the nose cone is fully deployed and the teams are checking those forward bulkhead Drake Dracos. Uh, that'll begin the sequence in that activation and rendezvous phase to begin the series of five major burns to raise Dragon's orbit and get closer to the International Space Station. 
So now that the nose cone is deployed, Dragon is ready for those phasing burns, as I mentioned, to the International Space Station with a successful, or successful orbital insertion. I'm now joined on the phone by Christy Duplishin, Deputy Manager of the International Space Station Dep Transportation Integration Office. Christy, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, it's good to be here. Hey, Christy, you had the pleasure of being at the Kennedy Space Center for launch. What was going through your mind as you witnessed yet another cargo mission successfully launch into orbit? Oh, my. Yes. Even though it's the 30th cargo mission for SpaceX, it never gets old. Um, I do still get nervous before each mission. And I think um, back to something one of my mentors said when I worked flight control back in the shuttle days, he said, if you're not nervous before launch, then you aren't remembering what it means to do this. And so I think that sums up how I felt. Um, and before each mission, regardless of how many times it happens, and I was adequately nervous. And so um, I'm also thinking about all the work that goes into making a launch happen. There's so many dedicated and hardworking people uh, that work every day to make these flights happen. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. So you can't just help but smile. It's so true, Christy, and really the team is putting a lot of work in, not just for this launch, but many others. The space station right now is a high traffic area. We've seen a lot of traffic before this launch and we'll continue to see more. What are some of the challenges for your office during a busy season of traffic aboard the International Space Station? That's absolutely true. It has been very busy over the last few months. Um, we still have several flights ahead of us. Uh, our team is great at keeping up with all of these vehicles that are coming and going. Um, as we prepare for these missions, our team makes sure that the vehicles and teams are ready to fly. One of the things I enjoy most about this job is the opportunity to work with the different commercial providers that are in different stages of development. Um, I'd say that one of our challenges is to make sure that we continue to evolve to meet our commercial provider needs uh, as we continue in our goal of commercializing low Earth orbit. Uh, we're here to support them and, and help them be successful. So um, it's a challenge and a privilege um, as we continue on these goals. It's important, right? There's a lot happening and there's uh, we're seeing more traffic and more launches than ever before. Now, when considering the traffic, science is key, and Dragon has the important science objective to deliver uh, science and also to station and also return that science back to Earth. How does the criticality of science fold into your office's planning? Yeah, that's a good question. Science is key. Um, my office has the responsibility of providing the service to get all of the science and all the cargo, um, even the hardware that we need for uh, different activities on orbit. Um, we get it all there to station. And so we work closely with the research and integration office to understand the needs of those uh, research experiments and that each provider has for each of those missions. Um, so for example, that's whether there, um, there are any time constraints that the science has when we load it on the vehicle for launch or if the experiment needs any special accommodations while it's in Dragon. And uh, we work with um, our science team to make sure we understand that and then communicate that to our vehicle provider. Um, then we look across missions to make sure that we have a flight lined up uh, to be able to ready, be ready to fly um, the science when it's ready to go. Um, and then also we have to return some of the science. So we also make sure that we have a flight ready to bring that science home when it's ready. So we work very closely with them uh, because we are providing that, uh, providing the ride. A lot of work and it's absolutely critical. Christy Duplishin. NASA Deputy Manager of the International Space Station Transportation Integration Office. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Dragon will begin the methodical approach to the station with phasing burns to again close the distance between the cargo spacecraft and the orbiting laboratory. This will take approximately a day and a half with approach and docking to the International Space Station expected early in the morning on Saturday, March 23rd. Join us on NASA TV and NASA Plus for our coverage of the final approach and docking of this spacecraft beginning at 4.30 a.m. Central Time, 5.30 a.m. Eastern on Saturday for a docking expected near 6.30 a.m. Central, 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Visit NASA.gov for the latest updates on our coverage and expected docking time as we follow the operations through the next few days. Thank you for following our joint coverage of NASA's SpaceX 30th Commercial Resupply Services launch. That'll wrap it up for here in for us here in Houston, as well as our colleagues in Hawthorne. Until next time, this is Mission Control Houston.